Hey, what's up guys? It's Taylor. Welcome back. Today I'm going to be talking about how I got started modeling, what that process has been like, and how I got to where I'm at today. So I've officially, I guess, been modeling for about two and a half years. I started full-time technically January of 2017, but a lot of stuff happened before that that led up to me really jumping into it and pursuing it as a full-time career. I think I really started wanting to explore modeling or the modeling industry when I was probably like 14 or 15. I grew up watching America's Next Top Model with my sister. I've seen every episode. I could tell you every winner in order. I really loved that show and that kind of showed me a little bit of the modeling world. Um, now I know that's not entirely realistic, but that's kind of what sparked my interest in it. Then when I was 16, I started working at the local Abercrombie Kids in my uh, mall in Indiana. Yeah, I think, I don't even remember how it happened, but I think they like, they kind of, at then they used to spot you in the mall and then follow you around and <laughs> come and offer you a job or tell you to um, come work for them. And so it was one of my first jobs and I started working there. At the time, I'm not sure how they do it now, but at the time Abercrombie used to do this thing called um, Cast Of. So all the employees would basically do like a photo shoot for internal use for the company. And then some people would get picked from stores across America to shoot the official like internal booklet. I shot that with my coworkers at the Abercrombie I was working at and had actually gotten chosen to go to Columbus, Ohio, where Abercrombie is headquartered and shoot for their internal book. Unfortunately, I was only 17 at the time, so I couldn't go, but that was like a sign that I was like, okay, maybe this is something I wanna pursue. Maybe this is a good idea. So I guess at the time I was, you know, 16 or 17 and decided that maybe this is something I wanted to pursue. So I, I, at that time I had never been on a plane. I had never left my hometown. I had never really been anywhere outside of Indiana. And so I started Googling how to be a model, how to start modeling, how like literally how to blank. And I ended up making a profile on some website, I forget what it was called, and had ended up getting contacted by an agent. And at this time, I had some photos, I think just like, actually I don't even think I had any photos. I think I was just like posting photos of like selfies or something, I, I really couldn't tell you. But then I got my senior portraits taken and kind of turned that into like this modeling photo shoot. I'm not your typical senior portraits. I will post some of them so you can see what I'm talking about. But I did that and I started using those photos as like a portfolio and I would send them to agencies, any modeling agency's website and like submit photos. I never ever heard back from anyone, which is not surprising. The photos were not probably what they were looking for. I did get contacted by this agent in New York. So I had been in talks with him via online. You know, we, we thought that it would be the best thing to go to New York and meet some agencies and do a shoot or two. And so at 17, by myself, with no idea if this was real or if this was going to be like safe or anything, I flew to New York and it was my first time on a plane, my first time in New York, and I was by myself. And so I met this agent, agent who, you know, had promised me all these things leading up to the trip. And then I get there and it's a total like sham. Like none of it's real. It was a very uncomfortable situation. To not get into it too deep, it was just like not a great situation. I felt extremely uncomfortable, not safe, and nothing came of it. And so it really kind of scarred me for a little bit about the industry. And I was like, okay, if this is really what it's like, then maybe this isn't something I want to pursue. I really don't want to do this. And add that on top of being 17 and away from your parents for the first time and in a bustling city that you've never been to before by yourself, it was just like a lot. So I went home. I just told my parents, I was like, yeah, didn't like it. Didn't really go into too much detail, but like if this is something you wanna pursue, we will support you for a year. 
So you can either go to college or you can move to New York or move to LA and we will support you for a year. And then after that, you're on your own. And having had the experience that I had in New York, what I thought was the real modeling industry, I chose to go to college. So I gave up the modeling stuff. I was just like, no, like not what I want to do, not a cool environment to be in. And so I went to school. When I was a junior in college, I actually got contacted again by a mother agency. So a mother agency is the first agency you typically sign with and they're basically your mom. They, they take care of you, they push you to other agencies to get you signed in different markets and they basically kind of act as your manager from the, from the beginning. So this mother agency had reached out to me. He was about an hour and a half from where I went to school. And he was like, hey, you should come visit. We'll do a shoot. We'll you know, make a book for you. We'll talk to see if this is something you wanna do. And we'll go from there. And so at this time, I had like been very much so living the average American's college life. I was not going to the gym a ton. I was not thinking about what my body looked like in photos. I really just was, you know, enjoying myself and my time in college. So I, you know, had had three or four years to kind of grow up from that first situation that I had gotten myself into that I didn't like. And I was like, okay, now I can kind of handle myself and maybe this time will be different, but if not, like at least I, I, I can drive, I have a car, I can get out, I know what I'm doing, I can handle myself. So I went to meet my potential mother agent and we did a shoot and it turned out to be real. So that's kind of where the start of the career happened. I was probably 20 years old, a junior in college. I went to go do my first shoot and it was my first time ever like being in front of a camera and kind of taking these um, shots. So I remember when I got the photos back, I was like so nervous to post them on Instagram because it was so not what I had been posting or what people knew of me. And um, yeah, so it was, it was a little nerve wracking. I did a few shoots, I got back to school. I started like really going to the gym, watching what I ate, and really kind of taking this seriously all while I was in school. So all I could really do while I was in school was make sure I was eating healthy, staying in shape, because I really couldn't, I was in the middle of nowhere Mississippi for school, so I couldn't really go to castings, there wasn't really a market there, so it was all kind of in prep for when I graduated. I visited Chicago a few times, summer going into my senior year, I really fell in love with Chicago, so I talked to my mother agent, I was like, hey, you know, when I graduate, I'm planning on moving to Chicago. Let's see if I can get signed. So I ended up getting signed with my first agency in Chicago at the time was Factor Chosen, which is now MP Factor. And so yeah, that was exciting. Now I'm like officially assigned a model, which I thought was really great. I now know doesn't really mean anything uh, because that doesn't guarantee you work. It just now you have agents working for you to send you on castings and get you jobs and and everything but at the time I was still in school I still had a couple months left before I graduated and was ready to move to Chicago I ended up moving to Chicago I had taken a full-time job just because I, I had just graduated I, I needed to work I needed to pay my rent I needed to pay my bills which kept me from going to castings I remember I went to a few I would pretend that I had to like go to the doctor or go on lunch and I would run to the casting from my office and you know go to the castings. And nothing ever came of those, and my agents started getting a little irritated just because I wasn't available to go on castings. It's not something that, if you don't have a flexible schedule, you can do very easily in combination with a full-time job. So, for the first couple months of actually like being assigned a model, I never really worked. I never even went on castings. I was like, you know, not really putting myself into a position to be successful in that world. So October of 2016, I quit my job. I had gone through a breakup and I didn't know what I wanted to do anymore. I didn't know if I wanted to be in Chicago. I didn't know if I wanted to work at a full-time job. I didn't know really what I wanted to do. So from October to December of 2016, I really was in this kind of limbo space, racking up a ton of credit card debt and, um, to pay my rent and to pay my bills. And 
I didn't really know what I wanted to do. And in the winter, the Chicago modeling market kind of slows down just because Chicago is like a winter tundra during that season. So it was January of 2017, I moved to Miami. And that's really where the career started to take off for me. So I, I, at that time I had quit my job. I didn't have anything else to do. So I was really putting all my full time effort and energy into modeling at this point. So I moved to Miami. I, you know, had been consistently getting myself into better and better shape before I moved. And I get there and I start doing shoots and I start going on castings and like luckily it, it worked. I remember my first job was for a German client in Miami and I shot some fleece sweaters. And I think the job paid like $1,500 or something, which was like, I was like, holy crap, I'm making so much money um, because I'm modeling, which was crazy. Yeah, so I started shooting a lot. Miami was a, was a, an interesting market to start in. It's a lot of like swim, a lot of body, a lot of muscle. It's, it was very like different than like who I actually am as a person. So I got a little bit caught up in my head because I started to think of myself only as valid if I, if I looked a certain way. So I felt like people were like kind of treating me like a piece of meat and just like it was a different, I was putting my, I was putting an image out there of myself um, that wasn't reflective of who I actually was. But at the time, it was it was hard for me to realize that this was not who I was, just what I was doing. And that's a conversation that I actually had with my mom after a couple months of doing it. I was really kind of second guessing it. I was like, maybe this isn't what I want to do. I don't like how I feel. I don't like how I need to look a certain way to get jobs or to please people or, or whatever it was. And she was and she told me she was like, you just have to realize that this isn't who you are, this is what you do. And as long as you can separate those two, then, then you'll be good. And that's when I really started to understand like this is a job, this isn't, this is me, I am, my, my body and myself, like my face, like this is the job, but like, it's like acting. It's like you're portraying a scenario for a shoot or for a campaign or for whatever it was. So once I realized that, it kind of made it a little easier to do because one, if you if you think of it in the same way like if you think of yourself as your work then you just it's it gets very like weird and like uncomfortable in your head sometimes you can kind of value yourself in a different way than you normally would so yeah Miami I was working you know a couple jobs here and there mostly just really building my my portfolio and, and getting images and doing shoots and so I think in Miami I was there for five months, I shot a couple jobs, went on a ton of castings. I shot my first campaign for Perry Ellis after four months of starting into the modeling world. So that was really cool. And then the season, the modeling season in Miami is, is the winter. So anywhere from like December to April or December to May or some, you know, in that span of time. So May rolled around and I was ready to go back to Chicago. So I moved back to Chicago. I still had my apartment there that I was subletting to someone and my lease was about to be up in Chicago. And if you've seen my why I moved to New York video, this is where that's about to start. So my lease was about to be up in Chicago. I wasn't working a ton there. I did end up getting um, one of my consistent, like really good clients, uh, which is Kohl's. Um, I would shoot with them, but I didn't really need to go on castings. It was all direct booking. So there was really no reason for me to be based in Chicago when there was far more opportunity in like LA or New York. And so then I decided to move to New York. But right before I moved to New York, I actually booked another campaign in Milan for a shoe company, which was really cool. So at, I mean, I had only been modeling for five months and I had already shot two campaigns and then a couple of e-com and catalog shoots here and there. So it was really like going well, which I'm very thankful for, I'm very appreciative of, and cause I know that's not typical of this industry always. So I moved to New York and I signed with Wilhelmina in New York. And I, again, once I got here, I was new to this market. So I did have to go on a lot of castings. I had to meet a lot of clients. I had to meet a lot of people just to like not even all the time for a specific job, but just to put your 
face and your name in front of these people so that when the right job comes, they know who you are. But I was going on a lot of castings. It took a while to get jobs here. There was, there was definitely a period where I wasn't working, uh, but I did, I was working at, you know, a couple other part-time jobs. I was catering, working at a, a boxing studio. So I was able to support myself, but I really wasn't working for a while. And that was um, a little hard for me because I just moved here in this hopes of like continuing this career and it wasn't happening. So I don't even really remember when it started, but weirdly enough, I started growing my hair out. I used to, I mean, I usually had like a, you know, like a little faded haircut with longer on the top, which is a great haircut for the average person. But when you're modeling, it's not very um, versatile. So once I started growing my hair out, I know it sounds funny, but I really did start booking more jobs. And I got, you know, some really good clients here that I shoot with once or twice a month. And yeah, it all just like started happening. I don't know. So in, in this year, 2019, I have shot um, three really big campaigns, my three biggest jobs ever. And I'm very excited about those. Those, those will all be coming out in the next few months. And it's just been going really well, but it's not just like, there's a lot more that goes into it just than going into a casting. They like the way you look, they book you. There's a whole business and like, not game, but there's, there's, there's ways to succeed. And there's, you know, when you're on set and you are shooting a job or you're at a casting, like it is very important to be personable and be nice and make connections because, you know, when you're shooting a big campaign, there are a ton of people that are in the process. You have the producer, you have the art director, the makeup artist, the hair stylist, like you have all of these people and any of them can vouch for you if they're um, looking for the right model or any of them can be like, actually I've worked with him or her before, they're horrible, blah, 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 and then you don't get the job. So it is like, it is a job to, to you know, make these connections and to build relationships with people to help you further yourself in this career because it is a lot about, it's not just about how you look, it's about how you work. Any, I guess like, any advice I could give to anyone hoping to get into this career is, I think the most important things are, as far as like looks wise go, is like clear skin. I remember when I was Googling how to be a model, what to do, like blah, blah, blah. The number one thing was always have clear skin and I was like, great, I have acne, what am I supposed to do? Like, this isn't gonna work. But just like taking care of yourself, eating the right things, drinking a ton of water, you know, really taking care of your, your body and your skin and, and because that is your job. That is what's gonna get you work. And then, like I just said, just like remember to be nice and to be personable and to make connections and build relationships because the person that you work with at Ecom at one job, you know, two years later might be the producer at a huge campaign that you want to book and since you guys have worked together so well now they can vouch for you and say that you're 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 great to work with you do a good job and so building those connections and really just like making sure you're being a good person um which you would think is um common sense but not always and i guess kind of like i mentioned earlier like something i struggled with when i first started was i was really depending on other people um liking me to feel validated in what I was doing or if that I was good enough and I was taking a lot of things personally and in this job like you cannot take things personally because the thing is is like they're looking for a specific person or people for a specific job if you're not that person because maybe the girl or guy model they're putting you with like you don't look realistic like then they book someone that looks more believable like it's not just like it's not like oh they hate you or you're not attractive enough or your or your xyz reason that you can come up with in your head it's just because typically like you're just not the best fit for that job and that's okay like you just have to realize that sometimes that's going to happen not to take anything personally because if you start doing that it is really hard to stay motivated and stay confident in in this career all right, so that's it. So I hope you guys enjoyed that little timeline of me in the modeling industry. I've only been doing this for a year and a half, so I don't have a ton of answers. I'm still figuring it, figuring it out every day. And yeah, good luck. <laughs> don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, um, share a video with your friends. And uh, yeah, hope you guys liked it.